The treatment of CRS WMP has shifted beyond belief in recent years. The rollout of biologics has revolutionised care and has changed patients' lives. But with it has come an ethical dilemma for ENT surgeons. The very drugs they're prescribing mean that fewer patients are undergoing revision sinus surgery, but surgeons need to follow up patients who've been put on biologics more regularly instead. And this is changing their practices dramatically and having an impact on hospital finances. So is prescribing biologics in the best interests of surgeons or patients? This is Euphoria News. Hello and welcome to Euphoria News. I'm Dr. David Bull. Until five years ago, most patients with severe nasal polyp syndrome, also called CRS WMP, were given sinus surgery and or received oral steroids in case of lack of control. But now we understand far more about the underlying inflammatory nature of the disease. And over the past 20 years, that knowledge has grown and with it has sprung up new medical treatment options called biologics or monoclonal antibodies. And that has had a huge impact on care. And as a result, patients with severe nasal polyp syndrome now have far more treatment options available, including using one of three registered biologics for CRS WMP. So most patients with severe nasal polyp syndrome now have sinus surgery, and then if that fails, they're now given one of three major treatment options, oral steroids, revision sinus surgery, or biologics. Now the irony of this is since the widespread availability of biologics, ENT surgeons are now seeing the number of patients undergoing revision sinus surgery drop, which is causing a major change of practice. This revolution of care for CRS WMP is causing something of an ethical dilemma. Well, to tell us more, we have two guests today, one from the United States and one from the European Union. Well, let's start in the EU. First of all, I'm joined from Vienna by Dr. Sven Schneider. He is a consultant in the Department of Otorhinolaryngology, head and neck surgery at the Medical University of Vienna. He is also a CRS EPOS expert panel member at Euphoria. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. Can I start by asking you, how have biologics changed your practice in Vienna? Well, for patients with type 2 sinusitis, um, the availability of biologicals changed my practice substantially. Not so long ago, patients with recurrent disease, um, all we could offer was revision surgery or systemic corticosteroids. And for many patients and also for doctors, this was not satisfying. Um, biologicals revolutionized um, therapeutic options. So especially for patients um, from um, suffering from recurrent disease and patients suffering from further diseases like asthma and NERD. And now we have alternative treatment options that we can offer our patients. And we have to discuss the pros and cons of surgical procedures and biologicals with the patients to find a therapeutic plan that fits the patient's situation the best. And for me as an ENT, I uh, focused long time only on the paranasal sinuses. And now biologicals forced me to deal with the whole patient because the majority of our patients um, suffers from systemic type 2 disease, like by the presence of asthma or NERD. And furthermore, we um, can treat two chronic diseases that have a strong impact on the quality of life with one therapeutic option. So briefly, we now have a toolbox of possible treatments and we can choose the right tool for each patient in their individual situation. So. Yes, we operate less on patients with CRS WMP, but we create happier patients in the long term. The, the word you used earlier was it's revolutionized treatment. What do your patients make of biologics? The feedback um, is sometimes overwhelming, like patients who didn't have a sense of smell like for a decade um, report that the sense of smell returned. and. Um, we also um, asked our patients what the preference um, would be for patients that um, experience both um, biological and surgical treatment and um, 
a lot of patients, especially those patients with systemic disease and um, further diseases like asthma or NERD, um, they prefer biological therapy over revision surgery. So, so in some ways, this has thrown up something of an ethical dilemma, because obviously you want to improve patients' quality of life. But as you say, it's cut down the use of revision surgery. So should sinus surgeons see biologics as a threat or an asset? Hopefully no doctor or surgeon sees an, uh, an additional tool in the treatment of chronic rhinus sinusitis as a threat. So we now have more options and we um, can um, choose tools from our toolbox to um, improve the patients in their individual situation. And yes, yeah, sometimes we operate less, but in the end of the day, it's the, the benefit for the patient um, that makes us by ourselves, makes us happy. So I don't think it's a threat. I think it's a, an additional tool um, that can create very, very happy patients. And finally, if I may, this area of medicine is moving very quickly indeed. How do you see the future? Well, the future in treatment of um, CRS with nasal polyps, um, in my opinion, should be a very individualized therapy. Um, we have to respect the patient's wish um, if the patient prefers surgical or biological therapy. And um, we have to figure out who um, of our patients will suffer from early recurrence, will suffer from uncontrolled disease um, shortly after surgery. And for those patients, we have to figure out um, what the best treatment option is um, as early as possible um, in their um, patient's journey. Well, thank you very much indeed for your time. Really good to talk to you. That's Dr. Sven Schneider there. Thank you. Well, let's pop over to the United States now. Joining us is Professor Dr. Stella Lee. She's a member of the Faculty of Otolaryngology, head and neck surgery at Harvard Medical School. She's also director of the Brigham Sinus Center at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Alongside this, she's also a CRS EPOS expert panel member at Euphoria. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. I'd like to start, if I may, by asking you some of the same questions I asked Sven. So, so let's start by just asking you, how has the advent of biologics for CRSWMP changed your practice in the US and actually practice in general in the United States? Great. Thank you so much for having me. You know, it's been a very exciting time. I was involved very early in the development in the clinical trials of the biologics. So I've seen the whole spectrum and the whole timeline of when we were just studying these biologics and incredible excitement of seeing my patients being able to smell again and their polyps melt away. And then now uh, being able to witness how these biologics have come to be available to um, the US and globally. So it's very exciting time. How's changed my practice? Uh, we have another option. We have three options here in the US, uh, dupilumab, omalizumab, and mepolizumab. And that's the order that they were approved uh, by the uh, FDA and um, came to us. So we have three options. We work in a multidisciplinary fashion with our allergy and immunology and pulmonary colleagues. And for our patients, especially who have severe refractory disease, who have aspirin exacerbated respiratory disease, it really is a great option for patients. And it's, it's really revolutionized how we think about the disease, first of all, but also how we can treat the disease. Uh, so in my practice, it has been a major um, uh, revol a major evolution, and uh, I'm very excited to see what comes next. I mean, it must be absolutely fantastic to see the change in the patients and how they respond. Now, clearly, you're very excited yeah. about this. We were talking earlier about actually it's reduced the number of sinus revision surgeries. So how has the rest of the ENT community reacted to the drop in the revision sinus surgery? Because I imagine not everyone is thrilled. Well, you know, as surgeons, we hopefully we don't like doing our own revisions. We like to hopefully uh, do one surgery that's excellent and the patients are happy. And if the patients are happy, hopefully we are happy with that. But when patients come back with recurrent disease, 
and they need another surgery, it's never a great um, meeting. You know, it's never a great conversation about what to do next. And and patients are anxious about how many surgeries can I really have for this? So uh, in general, what is uh, of concern apprehension is, you know, sinus surgery is one of the most common surgeries as otolaryngologists, general otolaryngologists, they do in the United States. And with any change in uh, evolution of medicine, I think there is some uncertainty, uh, some of, um, you know, how is this going to change my practice? But I think this has been the question for ages in medicine as as we have new technologies, new therapeutics. And I, I hope this is why we all go into medicine is because of that, is that there are new um uh, inventions, new technologies, new medications that improve the uh, care of our patients. Um, and we have to evolve with the times and hopefully provide uh, therapeutics that are modern, care that is modern, and find um, better ways in general. But I agree, there is apprehension, there's uncertainty. How is this going to impact my surgical practice? Uh, how is this going to impact how I deliver care? All those things. So um, there's apprehension about that. But in general, if we are thinking of the right thing, which is what is best for our patients, what as a and for my family member, for myself, for all of us globally, what would we we want? Um, we want what's best, what we want, what's modern, what's safe. Uh, we want the most options available to us and delivered in a, hopefully a way that, you know, our doctors and our physician, our, um, our uh, multidisciplinary teams can can really come up with the best options for, for, for us so that we can make that decision together. I mean, that's a fantastic answer. I think when you ask that question, do you see biologics as a threat or an asset, you're very much coming down on the side of, well, it's a great asset. Yes, I, I, I definitely do think that. I think if we have these very targeted therapies uh, that have less side effects uh, than oral corticosteroids, systemic corticosteroids, and patients who don't want to have more revision surgery, it completely makes sense that um, it is an asset to to us and the community and to our patients. So, so I mean, this part, this field of medicine has changed so dramatically in terms of the advent of biologics. How do you see your clinical practice evolving in the future? How do you see the future in general in terms of treatment? Yes, the future is is brilliant. You know, there's a wave coming of new understanding of how CRS with and without NP, uh, what is the pathomechanism? How can we think about uh, con new concepts of remission, remodeling, and hopefully cure? And I really applaud Euphoria and EPOS because they have been the leader in defining these concepts. And, and I see that um, we are re setting the bar higher. We need to think that way. And I'm really excited to to be a part of that and, and um, looking forward to what's next. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. An absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed, Professor Doctor. Thank Stella you. Lee. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to Euphoria for this opportunity. Fascinating. Ethics and medicine always intertwine. Many thanks to my guests, Dr. Sven Schneider and Professor Dr. Stella Lee. Now you can find more information about Euphoria on the euphoria.eu website where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. And don't forget to follow us on social media on YouTube, X, LinkedIn, Spotify, Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, goodbye.